good day. My name is Nancy. As an attention expert, I am constantly looking for examples of people and brands, companies that are truly paying attention to what matters. Today, my guest is Bob. Now, Bob Cohen is someone I've admired for many, many years. We've had the privilege of partnering with Comcast. And she's the Vice President of Talent and Inclusion with Comcast Spotlight. In the role, she focuses on strategy, talent, so many different ways to develop the careers of the people that she serves. She has a true passion for young adults as well and is always looking for opportunities to mentor them. She also was able to take a women's leadership program pilot and make it national. And some of the true talent and amazing stories have been created because of the work that she does. She has a passion for people and really making an impact on the world. What I admire about Barb is not that she's just a great human, a phenomenal mom, a fantastic role model, but in her heart, she is desperate to ensure that the world is more kind. So, Barb, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. So, you know that we're talking about this whole idea of attention, and I'd love to understand what does attention mean to you? Attention means to me, of course, focus and mindfulness. It, it also infers that you know what to pay attention to. Mm. And so when I think about attention, I think about what needs, what's relevant right now. And having a grounding on that is imperative to what I pay attention to. So whether that's a, a big thing, like we're getting ready for a dinner party and it's, you know, five minutes to five and I need to get the hummus and the carrots done, I got to pay attention to that. Or it's a long-term project where today is the day that I need to accomplish X, Y, Z so that ABC can happen a week from now. And, I, and knowing where that falls, I, I think the other piece of, about attention is not just the to-do and the task at hand, but the people that you are being attentive to. And you know, there's no better lesson for me than being a parent because it's, everything's urgent for a toddler. Um, but also really making sure, if I want my daughter to be mindful, I need to be mindful with her. Mm -hmm. And I need to look her in the eye and I need to give her the attention that she's asking for, even if it's silly. Right. Uh, I, and I guess I, the fourth thing I would say to you about attention is being attentive to yourself. And Recently, I, I was in a conversation with leaders about emotional intelligence and you know, the ability to be on the balcony and to have perspective and to know that, to, to know why you're reacting a certain way or to know why you're passionate about a certain topic or, you know, I like this person, I don't like this person, I want to be attentive, I don't want to be attentive, mm -hmm. and to really understand from the third perspective what's happening here and you know, to really be able to separate yourself from the person and the task in front of you and to take that bird's eye view to say, why am I even in this game? I love it's, that. Be in the game and of the game is, you know, is, is, I think it's Walt Whitman. That's in the book, we talk about the difference between attention and attentiveness. And I talk about paying attention is being present. Being attentive is a process. And I see you do that all the time with the Women's Leadership Program that you've created, the way that you've helped people get promoted, the way that you've helped manage some difficult, challenging conversations for people. But what is it about kindness? You are known in your corporation, in the industry, you are a leader within the WIC community, Women in Cable Telecommunications, a tele television. You are someone who is always described that way, but I know it's really important to you. What drives that? Well, I, I'd say that the original drive was my mother, who just believed everybody deserved that. Mm -hmm. You'd ask her, you know, when we were kids, and we'd say, Mom, what do you want for Christmas? What do you want for your birthday? And she'd say, kindness and love, kindness and love. Mm -hmm. And if and if we could do anything, it was to be kind. You know, we could not get good grades. We could not excel in sports. Thank God that was not a criteria in my house. <laughs> <laughs> we did not get the lead in the school play. We did not excel in the way traditional people might, might define excel or success, especially as kids. But if we were kind to somebody, 
that was the reward. That was the goodness. That was, you know, that's what we were praised for. The only time I was ever grounded as a kid was when I was not nice to somebody. Mm, fascinating. And that's, that says a lot because I goofed up. <laughs> so the original driver of kindness was my mom. And as I look at the workplace today and, and see so much that's happening, um, so much change, so much stress, so much competition. I think the differential for leadership is to be kind and to have the courage to be kind because it's what got me to a certain place in stature and success, if, it, if it's even deemed that way, might have been my functional expertise, my attentiveness to task, right? But what's going to get me further and what's going to lift the business further is my ability to lift others and to lend a helping hand. One of the analogies I use with our women is, you know, when you're kids and you're playing a jigsaw puzzle with your brothers and sisters, like I did, you know, five brothers and sisters, and you're all sort of competing for the attention of your parents, right? You, you want to find a place to win. So playing, doing the jigsaw puzzle, I was classic for taking the, the last piece, right? And I put it in my pocket and I hold on to it. <laughs> you know this happens, right? You hold on to it. And then when like the magic moment of like, oh, we just can't figure out how, what's the last, where it goes. And I'd show up and here I am with the last piece, right? <laughs> and yay. Well, first of all, they never said yay, Barb. They never <laughs> but I think about that in business, especially women that are so afraid to, to reveal the truth mm. or to share a best practice or to reach out to someone that's struggling because they're afraid it won't, it'll hurt them in the end. Mm. And, and, and they, there's a fear there for people. Right. And I do think it's, it's natural for women to feel this fear because there's just less of us, right? Oh, yeah. And if I help you, that's going to hurt me because you're going to get the glory and I'm not. And so that's a risk there. So the long-winded point to say, if we can do that helping hand, we will help you and me and the business. Um, we need to draw more of that correlation for people to say, right. what got you here was your expertise. What's going to get you here and truly what's going to lift the business is the ability to be kind, to reach out, to help the struggling person, to, to share the puzzle piece, mm -hmm. right? You have to share the puzzle piece in order for us all to win. Right. And we don't win this. You know, Brian Roberts doesn't win it alone, right? We win it together. But in order to win it together, we need to be kind. Right. Kindness as a strategy is very powerful when it comes to paying attention. And I think what happens is people notice not always just the achievements or the promotions you get, but they also pay attention to what is not being said, the way that you act, the way you hold yourself in a meeting, the way that you hold the door for someone, the way you treat a barista or a server at a restaurant. These are all things that are important. Nothing makes me more crazy than if someone is rude to a server in a restaurant. It literally makes me crazy, and I know you're the same. Mm -hmm. There is that a kindness in giving attention. In your work, Bob, what's the most important thing that you need to pay attention to? I'd say what I, you know, what I'd said earlier, I mean, I think, I think the number one is what's happening mm -hmm. and really understand both your, the emotional intelligence of what's happening with you and what's happening to the world around you. And really taking that third perspective of, you know, of the balcony right. and, um, and paying attention to the factors, what else could be true here. Mm -hmm. um, so taking a look at, you know, yourself and the people reading yourself, reading the room, reading, reading this situation. Um, it's important, you know, certainly, you know, from a, from a strategic perspective to pay attention to the, um, you know, the work at hand and the day to day, what do your customers need? What do their customers need? Right. I have to have that shame perspective of it's not just about this person I serve. It's about what matters to the people he serves or she serves. Um, you know, and being able to be in that moment of deciding that and, you know, at, at this moment, the most important thing I do is pay attention to you and the rest will follow. 
How can people pay more attention more by practicing kindness daily? What are some practical tips you would give them? I, I think the number one is to get grounded in what's most important and, and really having a solid footing on what's important to you as a leader and what do you want to stand for? Um, what do you, what do you want people to believe about you mm -hmm. and to pay attention to that and, and to use that footing to, to decide these other pieces of where your attention and your focus goes. You know, there's an African proverb, you have to know your ground to stand your ground. Mm -hmm. If you don't know your ground and you don't know what valued is valued for you personally, but also valued for your career and your profession and your company and your industry, you can't decide on, on that. And so I, I, I think that the very first practical thing I would say is, is to really get grounded in that. Um, I, you know, I think the golden rule applies to everybody. Mm -hmm. Is this, you know, when you have a, a, a secret you're afraid to share, when you have a best practice you're afraid to share, when somebody is talking negatively about somebody and you think it's not right, how would you want that? Mm -hmm. You know, would you want somebody to hold back the puzzle piece? Would you want somebody to pick you up when you fell? Would you want somebody to help you bounce back from, a, from a, the pothole you stepped in? Yeah, you would. And so I think, I don't think kindness is hard. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like the easiest thing you can do. Right. It takes courage mm -hmm. because it takes guts to pick up the phone and say, hey, sister, kind of blew that one. How can we, how can we navigate this? Right. Well, what did you appreciate the call from your sister? Yeah, that's true. Right? It is courageous kindness. I think you're right. That is something that it's that combination that we can all be kind or perceived to do things that are kind, but it's the courage to step out and say, hey, I need your help or hey, hey, this might be helpful to you. So being able to do that. Are there any companies uh, or people that you think do a fantastic job of paying attention to their clients, their members, their patients? I knew you would ask that, and and I I uh, honestly I I haven't put enough thought into the companies and into other companies. I do think, you know, from an employee perspective, Comcast is an amazing company to work for. Mm. And time and again, they prove that to me. Whether it's for myself personally, mm -hmm. you know, when when I've had personal situations, when my mother was sick, when we adopted our baby where it was, you pay attention to what you need to pay attention to and don't you worry about the rest. Yep. Um, and, I, and, and over and over and over again, you know, employees will come to me and say, you know, that's a differential. You know, my leader, my boss, my yeah. company, my department. Um, I don't, you know, I, I, I feel like they are really exceptional and our leaders are really exceptional when it comes to treating their employees with great kindness. Um, I'd have to I'd have to spend some time really understanding some other cultures to to answer that. But I do believe that in this chaotic culture we're in right now in America, there is a a, a, a real positive trend mm -hmm. in this. There's a lot of caca out there. There is a lot of bullying out there. There is a lot of nonsense on social media. But I think almost because there's so much nonsense out there. There's also that other switch, and I see this in young people a lot, mm -hmm. where they really are trying to change the dial right. to be more kind and to be um, more supportive of people that are underserved and undervalued. And I would reiterate what you said, both from the Comcast Cable and Comcast Spotlight sides of business, having been a, you know, privileged to work with you for so many years now. For the past 10 years, I've served as a motivational speaker for City Year. You know, the partnership mm -hmm. with David Cohen and City Year, which is like the Peace Corps for kids, uh, Comcast mm -hmm. Cares Day every year where people, employees, mm -hmm. take a day and they go into their community to make a difference. There are so many examples where, as a brand, they're doing phenomenal things that is paying attention to community as well as the individual mm -hmm. to work with them. And I think as a customer service story, they have done a brilliant job of turning around some of the mm. perceptions and really focusing and paying attention to what the clients mm. are telling them. And as a result, they're really seeing a change in the trend of the way that mm. people talk. 
So I absolutely, think I think that's one of the, the biggest transformations that the company has had, and it's yeah. really rooted in, you, you know, I, I, you know, it was rooted in, holy cow, we can't keep doing the way we're, we were doing it. <laughs> right. um, but understanding that, understanding the customer and understanding the employee mm -hmm. and what make a difference for the employee to, to change the customer experience. Right. And the way they rolled that out, um, you know, was, was really phenomenal. And I think it was rooted in both the employee side and the customer side and, it, and fully integrated. I, I think they've done an exceptional job. It's a brilliant example of paying attention and listening to clients yeah. so actively. Bob, any uh, final thoughts on this whole idea of attention or maybe courageous kindness? Yeah, I no, no I mean, not, not new perspective, really. I think just, I, I would say that there is a, if for no other reason than a selfish reason that that, that works together, mm -hmm. right? And the more, the more I support, the more I help, the more I'm kind, mm -hmm. the actual business results we, we achieve. Agree. Right? That there's not a... Um, it's not a debit credit system. No. <laughs> no, there's a, there's, a real, there's a real opportunity for us to really leverage courageous kindness as a strategy and to empower people to, to express that themselves and to, and to create a world where kindness matters and kindness continues to pay for itself. I love it. Well, thank you for sharing your insights today. I really appreciate it. You bet.